Cloudflare has a lot of different product offerings, some of which we've covered on the channel before, but I really wanted to try out R2, and so that's what we're doing in this video. If you're unfamiliar with R2, it's their version of Amazon's more popular S3. You get a bucket, you can upload files to, and just serve them from there. I won't go in depth on permissions or stuff like that. My goal is to just get you set up as quickly as possible, and so we'll just have a Cloudflare worker API that's running Hano. This is also serving a very basic HTML form to submit images normally for images there are services better optimized for that which include caching and other things one of those services being cloudflare images but i found this to be a lot easier to demonstrate so we're just running with it uploading an image on a form and then a feed where all the images uploaded are shown so let's get into it the first thing we're going to want to do is create the project so i'll just do bun create hano at latest and I'll just call it Cloudflare R2. The template I'm gonna use is the Cloudflare workers one and then install the dependencies and I'll use bun as the package manager. With that done, we can just open the project. So I'll do code Cloudflare R2. And this is our template. We just have a simple get endpoint that just returns hello Hano. But to get started with the buckets, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually do a bun Wrangler. And if you don't know what Wrangler is, it's basically their CLI tool to interact with Cloudflare products. So in this case, we're gonna interact with R2. So R2 bucket and then list. This is gonna list out all the buckets that I have. And it looks like, oh, it looks like I misspelled bucket. So bucket. And in my case, I don't have any buckets. So we can just create one. This is very simple to do. So we just do bun Wrangler R2 and then bucket, create, and then the bucket name. For me, I'll just call this R2 tutorial, and I misspelled bucket once again, so bucket. Now with the bucket created, we actually need these values here, so I'll just copy that, and then go to my Wrangler file. I can close my terminal, and I'll just replace this section down here. And for the binding, I'll actually rename this, so this is gonna bind back to what our end variable is gonna be, so I'll call this R2 tutorial bucket and if i copy this we can go back to where our api is and then we can do a type bindings and this is going to be equal to whatever m variables we want to define so in our case it's going to be the r2 tutorial bucket and this is an r2 bucket and to get this working, we just want to take our bindings and just have them defined in the HANO instance in here. So we'll just do bindings and this is equal to bindings. If you're curious why we do this, it's so when in the endpoints we have our context, we can just do c.env dot and then we have the autocomplete for the end variables but yeah now that we have that going we can just simply start working on our upload and if you're new to working with wrangler and cloudflare all you want to do to just test out your app is just bun run dev i'll walk you through how to actually deploy this at the end but you'll see here we have localhost 8787 and we have hello hano but yeah for the main page i actually don't want to return any text what I want to return is HTML. So we can just do return c.html and this is going to tell it that we want to return HTML. The one other thing that you're going to want to do is rename this to be TSX. Since we're using TSX as our templating, we want to also change the file extension. So TSX, and you'll notice that the TS config should also update to allow uh, JSX here. But yeah, now we can just return HTML. And in this case, I'll just do an HTML tag with a body tag and to keep it simple, all we want in here is just a form. And this form is going to be submitting a post. And the route that this is going to go to, I'll just call this slash file slash upload. And since here we're uploading a file, we want to set the encoding type as multi-part form data. So we'll just do that here. And for what the form actually contains, we'll have an input. The input type is of file. And I'll just give this the name of name for now. Now we also want a button to submit this form. So I'll do a button of type submit, which is just gonna say upload. So yeah, that's it for our form. If we try running this now, you'll see this error here. And this is because we forgot to update the entry point. So you wanna go to your wrangler.toml file and just update this to TSX. Once that's done, it should just work. And we can go back to our localhost 8787 and we just have our file upload with the upload button. This is obviously not doing anything right now, but if we click it, we should just go to file upload, which is correct. Now, before we get too far into this tutorial, I also wanna have a header that's for navigation. So 
I want to be able to go between different pages and that's the upload page and the feed. So I'll just create a simple header component. And it also has some simple styling, like some padding and some flex, but we just have a button that goes to the root or slash feed for the feed. And I'll put that right above the form. So header, which should now be displaying if we just refresh. So we have the feed, which we don't have yet, but we also have the upload. Now for some default states, before we get to the actual upload logic, I'll want a not found page. This is gonna just be displayed whenever we try accessing a route that doesn't actually exist. So all it has is just a body that says not here. You can see that in action with our page. So if I go to the feed, we're going to get a not here. I basically want to do the same thing with the file success or the file upload states. So in here, I'll have two states or two routes, I should say. One is where we get redirected if the file upload was successful. So it'll just be slash file slash success. All it has is just a header and it says your file was uploaded and then your file failed, which just says your upload failed. In this tutorial, we'll most likely only see the success page, but the failed one is definitely good to have there. And if I fold all of these, we can now finally get working on the actual upload. So to get uploading, like we saw in the form, we submit this as a post. So we have to do app.post and this will be at slash file slash upload. It'll have to be an async route. So make sure you have it as async. And for the context, we have to get the body of that request. So I'll just do const body is equal to away c dot request dot parse body. So this is going to get the body of the request for us. And then we can grab the file from the body by just doing const file. And then from the body, since we named it name, we want to grab name. We'll have a simple check here. So if not file or the file is not an instance of a file, then we have a problem. And so in this case, we'll just return a redirect. So see that redirect to slash file slash failed. I'm also going to console log this for myself in case I have to debug this, but we hopefully shouldn't have to. And so now that we know we have a file and in here, you can add more checks. You can check for the file size. You can check for the file type. I'll leave that up to you guys in this tutorial. I just want to get the file and just throw it in there. Definitely have something a lot more secure than what we're doing here. But in order to upload it, all we have to do is just const. And whenever you upload something, it will return an R2 object for you. So if it failed, that means you won't have an R2 object but if it succeeded, you will have one. So we just want to check that object just in case. So R2 object and to upload it, all we have to do is just await c.m.r2 tutorial bucket. So this is how we access the bucket directly and then put in order to upload it. And then for each file, we need a key. This key is actually useful for accessing the file afterwards. And in my case, I'm just going to do the file name for the key. This could be an issue if you're uploading files with the same key. So definitely watch out for that. And then we just want to pass in the file. If we have no r2 object then we just redirect again to file failed but if it worked we just want to return c dot redirect to slash file slash success and that should be all we need for just a simple upload if i go back to this and i just take a screenshot we can quickly drop this in and click upload and there we go our upload was successful you might be tempted to check this on cloudflare and if you refresh this you'll see that your bucket is here but you don't see the file that you just uploaded that's because when you're developing locally in development all of those files are actually going into this folder in the dot wrangler and you'll see the state here you'll have r2 and then you have all your blobs in here so it's a bit different when you develop locally but it should all just work the same way once you actually deploy but now let's work on the feed itself so for the feed we'll do a get so app.get and this will just be slash feed this will also have to be async because we're grabbing the files from the bucket there's probably different ways to do this but from me just playing around with it i found this way so i basically just get a response from listing out all of the items in my bucket the other thing that you might want to add here is pagination if you have too many items you are going to want to paginate this but in my case, I'm just going to want to list everything. So await c.env and then the tutorial bucket again. So r2 tutorial bucket and then list out everything. So dot list. If I don't get a response, I'm just going to want to return some HTML for could not retrieve images. But if I do get a response, I'm going to want to grab all the keys. And in my case, all those keys are the file names. So we'll just do const keys is equal to response.objects.map. And for each object, we just grab the object key. And so when 
when we return some HTML, so c.html, I want to have the header again. But now in here, I want to have an unordered list and I'll give it some styling. So I'll give it list style of none and then also a padding of zero. Now we can just list out the images. So for that, I'll do keys.map with each key. I could have done this all in one loop, so I didn't have to do this, but I just found this to be a little cleaner. So in here, when we return, I'll just return a list item. The key for each item will be just the key. And I guess I'll also give this a style. So a style of some margin at the bottom, I guess. So margin, bottom. So I'll give it some margin at the bottom. And for the image, we have the image tag. And then with the source, this is where it's kind of like the hacky way that I found of doing this with other files, you're going to want to serve them in different ways. You're going to want to have people download them, or you might even want to have a direct link. But in my case, I'm going to want to have a source of, and then you want to have back ticks here, but slash images slash key. Make sure you don't forget the dollar sign. And then for the alt, I'll just have the key, I guess. But yeah, this might look confusing because we don't have this route and we'll create it. But what this does, it just goes to slash images slash key. So that's the file name. And it just retrieves that image. This way, when the page loads, it just has the URL to that file and we can just load it on the go. It's kind of a hacky way since we're doing this all from the server side, but it works. So but yeah, definitely don't do this in production. This is just for demo purposes. I just want to show you how I'm displaying the image. If we actually go to the page now and we go to the feed, you'll see here the key for the image, but we don't have that route to fetch the image yet. So let's do that now. So for getting the image, we're going to have the key parameter in here. So we're going to obviously have to grab that const key is equal to C dot request dot param. And then we do key. And with that key, we're going to attempt to basically just grab that image from the bucket. So we'll just do const image is equal to await C dot env our two tutorial bucket again. And we'll do get with the specified key in the parameters. If there's no image, I'll just return some error state with 404 not found. But since we now found an image, all we want to do is just get an array buffer that we can stream back to the client. So I'll just do const buffer is equal to await image dot array buffer. So that's going to grab the array buffer for us. Obviously, if there's no buffer, we can also return a 404, I guess, with image content not found. Now this is where it's going to get a bit more hacky and this very much depends on your validation and what file types you support. But in my case, what I'm going to want to do is get the file extension from the file name. And then based on that, I want to set the mime type or the content type in my response. So to do that, I'll just do const extension is equal to image dot key dot split. And I'll just split this where the dot is. And then we can just pop since the extension is always going to be the last item, or at least it should be in our case. Again, it's not the most defensive coding, but this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm I just want to show how the image upload works. But for the mime types, I'm just going to create an object here. So for JPEG, we just have image slash JPEG and so on. Now, if we have no extension, I'm just going to return no file extension, just a simple 404. And now for the mime type of our file, File, I'm going to do a const mime type is equal to mime types. And then this is where we pass in our extension. So extension. And since we're working with TypeScript as key of type of mime type. And in case we found no mime type here, I'm just going to return an application slash octet stream. But yeah, that's basically it. Now we can just return a C dot body with the buffer. And then for the headers, we can just actually set that in here directly. So headers. And all we want to do here is the content type, which is down here and just pass in the mime type. But yeah, that's basically it for grabbing an image from our bucket. It should be working now. So if I go back to the browser and I just refresh my feed, we now see the screenshot. So if I go to upload and I take another screenshot here and I upload this in here, click upload, file is uploaded, go back to the feed and we get the second image. Awesome. So yeah, it's all working. The last thing we have left is to just deploy this. And that is just as easy. We can just do after shutting down the server, obviously, bun, run, deploy. And that just deployed it to a Cloudflare worker for us. We can just access it directly here. So it gave me a URL. Opening this, we get the same thing. And I'll upload another image here. So I'll just drop that in there. Upload. The file was uploaded. Image feed. We now see the image. And finally, if we go back to the bucket and now refresh, we should see that item in there which 
is right here. So yeah, R2 is just a bunch of buckets that you can just drop your files in there and have them accessible. Think of this as maybe PDFs that you have here and your users can just download. But yeah, pretty useful.